now that we've determined the number of microstates, looked at the free ion terms, we should talk about spin orbit coupling. And to do that, we need to consider a few different numbers. The first one is L, which is the total orbital angular momentum quantum number. And this is, again, our SPDF GHI quantum numbers, or, and we designated those as that, right? Counting from zero on up in the normal counting number fashion. So um, remember, S is L equals zero, and P is L equals one, and, and so on, right? D is two, um, F is three. I'm writing a few of these out because we're going to do some work with these. And they continue on up. S is the total spin angular momentum, quantum number. And we determine S by looking at the spin multiplicity. And spin multiplicity is your singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet. That was the superscript on the free ion terms that we had at the beginning. That is equal, the, the S is equal to the spin multiplicity. There's a formula here, which is two times S plus one equals the spin multiplicity. So we'll do some examples of determining that in just a second. And next we have J, which is the total angular momentum, which is really what we're determining. We're determining J, which is the spin and the orbit coupling to get to the total angular momentum quantum number. You can determine J by adding L to S and then subtracting one from that number, uh, subtracting potentially two from that number until you get to L minus S in terms of absolute value though. And so you have whatever this number is and then all of the a unit lower than that until you get to L minus S and then you can stop. So from this, we can use the free ion terms that we determined before and calculate the J values for them. And this is all working up towards determining what is the highest and lowest energy values in getting an idea for the structure of the electronic spectra. So let's remember uh, D2, free ion terms that we had, which is triplet F, triplet P, singlet G, singlet D, and singlet S. And so for E's, I'm going to write the L's and the S's, and then we'll have the J values down below. The L for an F orbital is three. Um, for a P orbital, it's one. For a G orbital, it's four. D is two. S is zero. S orbital. Chemists did not necessarily think ahead or whoever was doing this and had S for sharp and also S for spin. So, oops. So to calculate the spin, we'll need to look at the spin multiplicity, put it through our formula here. 
So if we have a triplet state, uh, we can solve for that, right? So I'll just do that right over here. Three, which is the spin multiplicity, equals two times some number plus one. Um, by inspection, that number is one, right? So two times one plus one is three. So S for a triplet state is one. This is also a triplet state. Singlet state, some number, times two plus one must equal one. Uh, well, then that's zero. Next, we add L to S. Three plus one is four. And we can subtract L from our S from L. So three minus one is two. And then we need the counting numbers in between these. In this case, it's three. We do the same thing here. Two, one, and zero, because one minus one is zero. In these cases, where S or if L were zero, which is the case over here, there is only one value. Right, because uh, plus or minus zero, it's not changing anything. So that's just four, two, and zero here. Now let's also look at P3. So in this case, we had quartet S, doublet D, and doublet P. So zero, two, and one. Now in this case, we have a four here. So four equals two times something plus one. So one subtracting from both sides, that's three. So this must be three halves. And I picked this one specifically because it has a half in the S value. For a doublet, the S value will be one half. So to calculate the J values here, uh, since this is a zero, then there is only one possibility, zero plus three halves or zero minus three halves, and then absolute value, same thing, three halves. So this only has one J value. Here, we could have five halves, because two plus a half is five halves, two minus a half, three halves. And then over here, three halves and one half are the possible J values. So this is spin orbit coupling and how to determine the J values given the free ion terms.